whenever I hear the term, get out of your comfort zone, I automatically get defensive and I move away from doing anything but get out of my comfort zone. I get very protective because it sounds silly. Why would anyone want to be uncomfortable? When someone tells me to get out of my comfort zone for absolutely no reason, there's no why, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. In fact, I refuse to feel uncomfortable. How about that? Why would anyone want to feel uncomfortable? It makes absolutely no sense. Except it does. Let me explain. The comfort zone's only concern is to keep you safe. Its primal instinct is to say to you, stay in this still place where nothing unfamiliar or new, nothing new will ever surprise you. Not even new opportunities. The comfort zone wants you to expend the least amount of energy in order to survive the longest, to be still, to be stationary. The comfort zone is only concerned with the length of your life, extended as long as possible. The comfort zone does not, I repeat, does not care one bit about the quality of your life, like how happy you are or could potentially be if you were able to step outside of your comfort zone. It wants the same lowest possible survival mode habit from you that expends the least amount of energy. It does not care about your growth or happiness. It does not care about moving forward at all. It is concerned with stasis, survival, longevity. You may as well be in a cage. Most people don't change until pain hits. Most people stay comfortable until something forces them to deal with all the years of discomfort, all the years of apathy, what you've ignored till now. Prices go up, oh, now I need to get a better job. The doctor tells me, unless I cut down sugar, my leg's gonna be amputated. And you know what? I get healthy. And I'm not picking on anyone in particular. I've done this a lot of times. It's human nature. We choose the path of least resistance. We won't experience a little bit of discomfort until a huge discomfort starts knocking at the door. In essence, the lazy comfort zone caused all of these times up until now. It caused the worst times to happen because you didn't want to experience a little bit of discomfort before. The comfort zone is like that ex that love bombs you and then they leave. I think that most of us think that we can push the uncomfortable right choice into the future. It's like a book we put on the shelf that we say, say we're going to read someday. We secretly hit pause on the choice today, thinking that we'll never have to deal with it again or we'll deal with it later. But avoiding it now, avoiding when we know we should do it, uh, we don't actually push it to tomorrow. We push it to never. Choosing to do the uncomfortable but necessary thing does something really freeing though. It stops you being haunted by the comfort zone. It stops you looking backwards all the time. Staying in your feel-good comfort zone always keeps a low-level guilt within you, a level of anxiety as life moves on, but you don't. As your to-do list grows, but you don't. The comfort zone kind of leaves you behind in life. Okay, so the comfort zone feels good. But at the cost of what? What does it cost you? What does it deny you in your life? Have you ever thought about that? What does the comfort zone keep from you? I came to this important realization about not just what the comfort zone gives us, feel good, comfort, warmth, and all of that, but also what the comfort zone actually keeps from us, what it takes away from our lives. You see, it denies us the feeling of accomplishment and victory afterwards. It denies us feeling proud and successful at something we could have achieved, maybe. You see, we achieve nothing interesting by staying buddies with our comfort zone other than simply staying alive watching the same movie over and over again, and we just end up staying at our Maslow's base level like an unthinking animal. We deny ourselves feeling proud as human beings 
of building self-esteem or feeling fulfillment from something we can point to later, we deny ourselves a meaningful dopamine hit because of something we actually did instead of the dopamine hit from pressing likes on our social media. The comfort zone's blind spot is that we never feel that good. We just feel comfortable. We don't learn, we don't grow, no new conversations, just the same old echo chamber, the same Groundhog Day. We don't really feel happy, we just feel familiar. Many of us are just reliving the same Tuesday over and over and over and over again and calling that a life. And many of us think, well, that's good enough. Until one day it's not. So why get uncomfortable? The first is that we get to cross things off our lists and we all love the dopamine rush of crossing things off our lists. The second and probably biggest one is that we get used to, as our default mode, not trying. Not trying becomes our default reflex. Whatever it is, don't try, can't be bothered, tomorrow, I'll do it later. If you resist anything that requires just a, even a little bit of discomfort, pretty soon you won't be able to maintain even the most comfortable things you take for granted like brushing your teeth, catching up with friends or even getting out of bed. Your mood and your social circle worsens over time no matter what you signal in the comments section and online and the posts that you leave. I've suspected most people are signaling who they want to be, not who they are. When a lot of people forcefully tell you, I'm happy, I don't need this, I don't need anyone. I suspect a lot of times they're not really saying I am happy, they're saying I want to be happy. And a, a really big thing that happens is the more you get used to discomfort, the lower your anxiety levels get, the more confidence you get, the calmer you are the more predictable your life is and the more control you feel in your life. And you start to become optimistic and positive, which is something I think is, that is very, very lacking today. Look, I know the phrase means well, but if you're anything like me, when people tell you what to do, like just get out of your comfort zone, dude. I know the phrase means well, but it always made me feel defensive. So I was thinking, all right, what's the phrase actually trying to say? It's saying, experience something new so you don't grow old and rot in the corner, so you experience life. There's an explanation as to why you might want to try it. So the well-meaning saying, get out of your comfort zone, was actually making me uncomfortable. Well, maybe that's what it was designed to do. Okay, so I thought, let me see if there's a reason to feel uncomfortable by rephrasing get out of your comfort zone in my language so the meaning makes sense to me. And it was only then that I came up with better sayings for me that work for me. Things like, do what you don't want to do, but you should do, which to me is better than just do it. And often this type of rephrasing of uncomfortable ideas to fit your type of terminology so that it's tailored specifically for you is a really good way to give you a good reason to get out of your comfort zone instead of the just do it phrase, which is fairly intrusive without giving you a why. How I speak to myself is the biggest factor if I can actually overcome my own comfort zone. You can't just get out of your comfort zone. You need a reason why. And that why has to be specifically tailored to you as a person. When you find your key, like, like for instance with me, it's do something new, but do it your way, human. That's what works for me. You need to find your way. Others use sayings like lean into discomfort or whatever it might be. But whatever it is, make sure you find something that speaks to you and then causes you to act or makes it a lot easier to act and doesn't just keep what you know you should do, doesn't keep pushing that away. Because the whole overall reason why I was resisting the phrase, get out of your comfort zone, man, was because there was no specific why to me. There wasn't a reason why I should get out of my comfort zone. And that is the key. It's very easy to respond, why should I, when there isn't any why.
Here's a radical perspective. Rather than getting into an uncomfortable zone, um, think of it as pushing the walls of your comfortable zone outward. That is, adding more good stuff into your world instead of resisting what you don't want or what's bad. It's a notion of becoming more comfortable with more things that you might want to try or even know you should try. And I actually prefer this type of enlargement of my comfort zone rather than stepping into an uncomfortable, sketchy environment. And what actually ends up happening is that you increase the size of your own comfort zone by doing this. If you keep choosing constructive discomfort. So find your personal why so that you can make your comfort zone bigger. As corny as it sounds, I've learned to make a habit of trying to do what's right. It's like any habit, it's exercise. I've gotten into the habit of always leaning into do what you don't want to do, but you know you should. Do the right thing. You, you know you're going to feel better afterwards. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. It helps YouTube share my videos around and helps my channel grow. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss future videos and share my video with someone you think might enjoy it. Well, that's all from me today. Catch you in the next video, guys. Bye.